In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm using server actions in my Next.js project, how I'm doing that securely and while maintaining a good developer experience. So this method really comes down to installing four packages. The first one is Zod because we're going to validate the input and we're going to validate the output, which is really important. And this ZSA package and some accompanying packages like ZSA React and ZSA React Query. So you need to install these four packages here and then you can see how you might use these. So we have a query here and then we have a mutation. So our query and our mutation are going to look a lot like Tanstack query. And the reason for that is because this package here, ZSA React Query is using Tanstack query under the hood. So to define our query, we're going to use this use server action query. And I can show you how I made that in just a second. Then we're going to pass it an action. So we can have a look at this and we can see that this just is a server action that looks a little bit funny, but I'll get into that in just a minute. And you can see that this comes from a package that is using use server. Then we're going to define some input. I'm not actually sure how to do this without providing any input. It seems to throw some type errors, but that's okay. We can provide an empty object of input. And then we need to provide a query key as well, because remember this is using Tanstack query. So if we go into use server action query, this pretty much all just comes from the docs. So I'm importing Tanstack query and ZSA react query. I'm using the create server action key factory here to create all of my queries along with their keys. So if we go back to this query here, you can see that this key here is strongly typed. So you can see all of these types here or all of these options and they come from these options here. Then we're going to call this setup server action and that is going to return these three properties here. And this is just our query, our mutation and our infinite query. And then we're going to export those. And then this is going to take our use query, which comes from 10 stack query, use mutation and our query key factory as well. Okay, so I'll show you a server action now that is unauthenticated. So we have this server action here and this is called handle by now button action. And we call our create server action here and create server action is going to come from ZSA. Then we're going to call dot input and we're going to provide a Zod schema here. So this Zod schema could be defined outside of the action. So we could say const by now input is equal to this object. And then you could pass that in. And the reason that you might want to do this is because you might want to share this schema with the client. One thing to note is the client won't be able to import this schema from here, even if we did export it. And the reason for that is because this file is using use server, which is important because it is just a React server component. So if you did want to import this schema from the client and into your server components, you would need to put it in a different file. So it's shared between the client and the server. The next thing that we're going to define is our output. And this is important because if we define a good output schema, it means that we can't leak data from our actions. You can see this one's only returning URL, but you could be returning a whole object, let's say user, and we want to define all the properties on that user that we can return. And then we don't run the risk of accidentally returning any other properties. Because remember, these server actions are pretty much just endpoints into your application. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is calling this create payment intent. And the way that I've structured this is I have actions and actions are pretty much my handlers for my routes. And then my actions can call services. So I have a service here and this is going to do things like get my user, find my listing, and it's going to do a bunch of interactions with the database. So we can have a look and see how I've used this action here. So we have this buy now button and I've just imported this action from my server actions. Then the next thing I've done is used use server action. And use server action comes from ZSA React. Then I get my execute here. And if you're using Tanstack query, this would be like mutate. And then I get is pending. And this is the loading state of the action. So I can also provide an object here with things like on success. So if we click this button and we get our success response, then we can just push to the URL that it returns. We also get a bunch of other ones like on error and on start. And yeah, we have some overloads here for on error and on start. 
So to execute this function, I've wrapped it in an async function here. And then you can call on click, handle button click, and then execute needs to be awaited because it returns a promise. So you can see here that I have a linting rule to say that promises must be awaited. And then you need to pass in your arguments into execute as well. And the reason for that is because we defined those arguments here inside of our input. Okay, so another really cool thing about this is that you can build your own procedures. So if we have a look at this create repo listing action here, you can see that I'm calling auth procedure here. And then on auth procedure, I'm calling create server action. So let's have a look at auth procedure. And you can see that I'm calling create server action procedure. And then I'm calling a handler on here. And in this handler, I'm going to run some async code that is going to make sure that the user is logged in. For example, I'm calling this get server session with my op options because I'm using next auth. Then I'm going to get the user ID from the session. I'm going to try find the user and then I'm going to return the user inside of this handler. So there's probably a better way that I can do this actually. I do have a function that is inside of user.actions or user.service called get user. And I probably should be calling this and I should be calling this with my cache from React, but I can clean that up later. So note that I'm returning the user in an object here and let's go look at something that uses this. So you can see we have this function create repo listing action and we're using our auth procedure and then we're calling create server action. So by the time we get down to this handler here, our handler inside of auth procedure would have executed and now we get this context object here and our context object is going to be populated with our user and our ID. And you can see that this is properly typed as well. So we have context.user and it knows that user is a property on there, but it also knows what other properties user has. And this is really nice. And the reason that we can do that is because we can't ever get to this section here without user being defined inside of the request object. Okay, so I have another custom procedure as well. And that is called owns listing procedure. So if we go have a look at that one, you can see that owns listing procedure is going to extend our auth procedure. So by the time we get to this code here, we know for a fact that the user is authenticated. So we can try find the listing inside of the input. So if you're going to use this procedure here, it has to have a listing ID on the input. And you can see that this drop file schema here does have a listing ID. So this is going to work. And then I'm going to get the user from the context because remember we've run auth procedure. So we know that for a fact that user exists, then we're going to try find the listing ID. And we know that exists because we wouldn't be able to get down to this line here if the request didn't have a listing ID in it then I'm going to make sure that the user does own the listing. If they don't, I'm going to throw an error. And then if they do, I'm going to return the listing and the user. And now in my context for this action, I'm going to have the listing and I'm also going to have the user. So that is how I'm using server actions in Next.js and I'm doing it securely while maintaining a really good developer experience. Let me know in the comment section below if you're using a different method. And if you like this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.